to know your beloved Mora Garberg, well, it's time to dump that old tired blade for a better alternative. At least that's what Victorinox would like us to do with their recent release of the Venture Fixed Blade series. This Sandvik 14C 28N Swiss made knife was clearly created to take a big chunk out of the kingdom of bushcraft that the Mora Garberg has been reigning in for many years now. And the Venture is attempting to do that with different design characteristics and features so that it's not just another Garberg clone. But there are definitely a few stumbling blocks that this knife is gonna have to overcome if it's gonna usurp the role that the Mora Garberg has in many of ours rotation when we go on our outdoor adventures or just utility around our property. And so I can't wait to unpack all of the capabilities and limitations of this tool with you. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Aaron, this is Gideon's Tactical. And as we dive right in, I want to point out this first characteristic that's very rare on most knives. And it's back here by the full tang. It goes all the way through the polymer handle, comes out the back. This lanyard hole and is cut out in a hex formation to be able to handle most quarter inch pallet bits so that you can then bore out a hole for different bush crafts that you may be doing. I tested it out on about a half inch maybe it was three quarter inch thick piece of wood. Took me a few minutes for sure. So, I mean, it's to do in a pinch if you wanna lighten your load, a two handed auger would obviously be way better if you're doing several of these, but one or two that you need to do, it is absolutely doable and gives an extra layer of capability for those of you who really like to build and craft on your adventures in the bush. Now, on top of that, it's got a nice sharp edge all the way back there on that exposed tang portion that can not only throw sparks if you want to, but is actually designed to help easily cut out the bowl of a spoon. So if you like doing spoon carving, this will actually speed up that process because that's one of the trickiest parts is, you know, cutting into that bowl. Now, as I was doing it, it can definitely do it and you'll, you'll be there a while before you get through, at least with the piece of wood I was using. But I remembered, well, the Mora Garberg has that as well. It's got a razor sharp, you know, striker portion back there so you could throw sparks now it's wider and not and more recessed so you're not going to get as deep with it but in a pinch you could do it with the Mora garberg as well but the swiss army uh venture is definitely designed to do that so that's a cool two you know double feature that this knife has that a lot of other designs don't offer and since we're on the back end, let's hit this handle real quick, which is a polymer over that full tank construction. And you're gonna get really nice contouring. It's about 4.75 inches overall handle length, good kind of swell in the middle, little bit of tapering near the front and back. The texturing is pretty cool. It is the Victorinox like logo and it says Victorinox all over the place. Little ribs up top and down below, no hot spots anywhere on this. I mean, it is definitely designed to grip in any you know, reverse angle, whatever you would want. Fills out my large size hands very nicely. Even with gloves on, I'll have plenty of real estate. A Little bit of a guard there, actually pretty good size guard. In fact, a lot more than what you're gonna get on a Garberg. So if you like having a deeper guard and just more control in that way, a little bit more safety, if you will, this will have that nice scalloping on either side there. So you can do pinch pulls, you know, guide the blade if you're doing draw cuts, things like that. And then you can get it in this OD green, almost like a natural green, it's not really OD green. And then you can get red, you know, stereotypical of Victorinox and then black as well. And I would argue this is an ultra light knife being over four inches in blade length, but coming in at 4.1 ounces for the knife itself and about five and a half, if I remember correctly, with the sheath. That means that's a third less in weight than the Mora Garberg, which is gonna be six ounces for the knife itself. And then I think seven and a half or even eight with the base model polymer sheath. Now there's a pro version that comes with a bow drill divot hole and a few extra features in the sheath that we'll talk about a little bit later. This model does not have that. It will be a little bit heavier because of that material in the handle for the pro series. But when you hold the standard Venture versus the Garberg, you can definitely tell that the Venture is lighter, quicker, and more nimble, whereas the Garberg is definitely a little bit denser, feels a little bit heavier and a little bit more robust. And that robustness is gonna play into the blade performance where I have discovered that there's a potential fatal flaw in the blade on the Venture. And we're gonna unpack what that looks like and whether or not we can overcome it and overlook it or not. But before we do that, I wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is LA Police Gear. Now they've been giving us access to tons of excellent brands for over 20 years. 
but you may not be aware that they are a direct supplier of Danner boots and footwear, and they've recently gotten a large influx of styles and designs for both men and women. And so I recently picked up a pair of their Free Spirit Monk's Robe hiking boots, and my wife scored a pair of their Inquire Chucka boots, and they have been our constant companions as we've been exploring the Rocky Mountains this fall. And with plenty of designs to choose from, from their trail runners to more casual designs, hiking boots, and hunting boots, you'll be able to find the right style for your next adventure. So guys, I'll have a link in the description below this video over to the LA Police Gear website, as well as my exclusive 10% off promo code that you can apply site-wide to all types of different gear and equipment. So I invite you to click that link, hop on over, and check out all they have to offer. Now let's hit all the highs before that one low with this blade profile. Now at 4.3 inches overall blade length into a spear point design with a full flat grind with Sandvik 14C20 and Rock Weld 59, which is really nice. That's actually on the blade versus what Moore has been doing lately, which is really annoying, which just says recycled stainless steel across their website, across all their blades. It's fine to say that, but like, tell us what type of steel first. Say Sandvik, Sandvik 14C, 28N, recycled stainless steel, and give us the Rockwell. Say 12C27, Sandvik, recycled stainless steel, and then give us the, you know, it's just, it feels like they're kind of hiding the ball. It's, it's really annoying. So anyway, the the blade, what, what makes me and probably a lot of you gravitate to it is because it's a full flat. We have so many Scandi grinds on the market. I love Scandies, they're great, but there is a extra level of utility that full flat grinds can sometimes give us. And this offers a very classic profile in that. Mainly, and where you're gonna see this really excel is in uh, slicing meaning like food prep. This is an excellent food prep knife. It's a great like steak knife to have just on your body all the time. Or when you're camping, you know, out in the wilderness, doing your bushcrafting, whatever it is, this is superb for that. And, you know, meat processing and really particularly uh, like harder fruits and vegetables. That's where a flat, full flat will definitely outperform a Scandi. That Mora is not fun to use doing food prep. I don't enjoy using it. I way prefer this blade and it will excel in that. And then just general slicing, like if you're doing a lot of like cardboard, man-made material, doing those type of activities, this edge geometry, because the blade is only 0.13 on the thickness, so an eighth of an inch thick, um, just a hair over an eighth of an inch thick, means that it's gonna be extremely slicey, very easy to do fine work, even out in the woods, doing your feather sticks. It's really easy to get those like hair thin curls to help you start a fire, to manipulate, to cut out something really easily. And be, I, I really enjoy Sandvik 14C28N. It's extremely durable in its like lateral strength. I mean, I was cranking on this thing. You can see the flex that this went through. Uh, the tip is fine, so it's gonna be good for precision. The Mora is definitely gonna have a thicker, more robust tip. So if you're pretty hard on your tip or you do a lot of things with your tip of your knife, the Mora is definitely gonna outperform that. But this held up relatively well for the stabbing and just lateral testing that I was doing. I was pleased that I was able to hold up to that. And then the harder tasks. Now, in theory, the Sandvik steel should be able to handle a, a lot of toughness, a lot of durability. And even though it's an eighth of an inch thick and full flat, I have plenty of eighth of an inch full flat grinds that really perform well. The catastrophic issue that I have now seen, not only on my model, but I watched another YouTube video and they had an even worse damage going through wood when they batoned is I have discovered that I have a probably about the thickness of my thumb edge wave that has occurred. And I have not purposely tried to damage this in any way. And I'm gonna to try to have it show up. There you go. You can see it right here where the there's like this bubble that it looks like right there. And it's minute, but when you look down the edge, you can see the blade go where it went through something. And I'm batoning white wood. Here in the Rocky Mountains, we have mostly like pine, aspen. Uh, we definitely don't have like hardly any hickory or other types of really hard, dense wood. So this is soft wood that you're seeing in the batoning testing. I don't know quite when it happened. It was before I did any of the lateral like bending. So it happened in some course of events with batoning and I did not overextend this blade in any way. The Mora Garber could easily handle any of the tasks that you have seen and without deformation of the blade, the blade wobbling or doing something like that. So either this is just too soft at 59 on the Rockwell and maybe that it's even lower down there. Maybe it's bad heat treats. I'm not sure. Or 
It can just be that it's a very thin, very precise behind the edge blade, which it is, and it just can't handle hard abuse. It just can't. You just can't put it through the batoning that you're seeing and the hard side splitting that sometimes does occur with bushcraft. And that is really disappointing because the price is there at about $75 for the base model, about $115 for their Pro, and then you can even get like a crazy kit to go with it if you really want to make it like a one-stop shop. Just for some perspective, here is the Joker Campero. This is Samfig 14C28N, Rockwell 58 to 60. It's going to be 0 0.1 four i believe on the spine thickness so it's just a hair thicker but it's a full flat grind same steel european you know processed same design and i put this through much more longer tasks than this has and it has no edge deformation chipping rolling you know any anything like that no problems and this is held up excellently well with that type of steel this is full tang pinned in micarta you can get wood and a leather sheath and depending on the leather sheath variant you can get these from like 70 to like 90 bucks so uh, throughout this video i'm going to have links to the garberg to this joker and to the victorinox if you do decide to do that so basically what i would say is that this is an extremely light duty knife great for precision if you want to treat it like a scalpel and you use your knife like a scalpel then this is very good in a lot of capabilities with that 90 degree spine and everything else but if you're looking at it as like competitive to the Garberg. The Garberg is definitely superior in its durability on, on every level that I can see, both in tip strength, but also in just handling harder abuse. And then finally, the sheath. It's, you know, it's not great. It could have been improved quite significantly in a fixed blade lives 90% of the time in its sheath. So a sheath, particularly in the 21st century, needs to be executed well. And I'm like, mm. so the Pro Series will have like, uh, tweezers, fire steel, and like a pen or something. And then again, you can get this whole like kit for it. So the deal is very loud. Garberg, that's just the lanyard slapping. I mean, it's silent. It's super, super quiet. It's ambidextrous, so that's a good thing. You got this little sleeve right here that says Victorinox on it that passes through. And then you got this nice nylon strap, very large. You know, you can get any normal size belt through there without an issue. And then this elastic band right here with a little tab that holds the handle into place if you're like hiking or trekking. So that's good because it won't come out when you do that. Whereas the Garberg, just with the standard version, now they do have the Molly compatible, you know, set. I mean, that'll come out with a simple little jerk. Now, if you don't use the strap, you'll actually get slightly better tension. But again, it's just so loud and it seats weird. It's got these like little teeth right here that can catch the guard, but sometimes you get it in like at an angle and it doesn't want to go in. See, it's like catching right there. It's, it's an awkward setup. Now again, rotatable and you completely remove the nylon strap if you wanted to and just like put it in a pack just to kind of like lighten it even a little bit low, less, I guess, or more if you wanted to. So um, there are ways, I guess I'm seeing some people like put this into boiling water and then like mold it around, you know, and make it a little bit tighter, a little bit snugger. And that helps with the slap. So it's doable, but it, it just, if it was quieter and just had a more like organic click in, would have helped a little bit with the sheath. So guys, when I purchased this, I was super pumped. I was looking forward to an alternative to the Garberg at around that same price point with similar steel, similar capabilities, but a full flat grind. So there's an alternative for different capability. But after having used it, having seen my edge deforming with general bushcraft tasks and knowing that I'm not alone in that and seeing that on the one other YouTube video, uh, I'm, it's basically a glorified kitchen knife. I was really hoping for more. And if you're looking for a full flat grind version in that same price point, again, the Campero from Joker Knives uh, would be a great alternative. I, fr I freaking love that knife. That is like one of my favorite sub $100 knives in that in that size range it's a great camp knife so um but guys i look forward to hearing from you particularly if you own one have you been seeing similar edge issues or not this is my mileage your mileage may vary and i look forward to hearing all the comments below thank you for joining me today i invite you to again check out the other video popping up and subscribe if you haven't yet until next time always remember stay equipped stay prepared and i'll see you out there